There are many terrifying creatures and monsters that can be found in Greek mythology, but none are as deadly or as terrifying as Typhon. While the war between the Titans and the Olympians raged on, the primordial goddess of the earth, Gaia, could not bear to see her children defeated and imprisoned, and so together, Gaia and Tartarus created one last monster, their last attempt to repel Zeus and the Olympians and stop their rule over the world. That monster would be known as Typhon. Typhon is often depicted in a few different ways, the most common being the torso of a man. His lower body was made up of the coils of giant vipers that would hiss violently and attack anything that came close. He was as tall as the sky with large, thick wings. His eyes would glow red and terrify anyone who gazed upon them. He had a mane made up of hundreds of different animals, and his ability to breathe fire meant that wherever Typhon went, devastation and destruction soon followed. When the Olympians first saw Typhon, many of them fled, and it seemed as if Gaia's plan to help the Titans would work. But Zeus would not flee, he stood firm, and a series of battles between the two took place. In the very first battle, Typhon repelled all of the Olympians with ease. With only Zeus remaining, he overpowered the god, tearing his tendons from him, and leaving Zeus with no option but to flee. With Zeus wounded back on Mount Olympus, it fell to Hermes to use his speed and guile to recover Zeus's tendons. Having regained his strength, Zeus knew that he would have to make his last stand on Mount Olympus, or everything that he and the other Olympians had worked for would be for nothing. He mustered all the strength that he had remaining, and hurled hundreds of bolts of lightning at the beast. Eventually Zeus's persistence would pay off as he overpowered Typhon, casting him into the bottomless pit of Tartarus. It's believed that Zeus placed an entire mountain over where Typhon had fallen in order to stop the monster from ever escaping. That mountain would be known as Mount Etna, and the ancient Greeks believed that volcanic eruptions from the mount and even nearby earthquakes were caused by Typhon trying to escape his prison. There are many varying accounts as to the events that took place during the Battle of Typhon and the Olympians. When all the gods attempted to flee, it was Athena that stood firm and convinced them to stay and fight. When Zeus had given up all hope, it was Athena once again who rallied behind her father, giving him the courage to defeat Typhon. In some variations, Zeus's lightning proved no match for Typhon, and he easily overpowered the god, spending years torturing him. Hermes and Pan were the only gods brave enough to help Zeus, and together they managed to escape Typhon. Typhon was sent to Earth with only one purpose, to end the reign of the Olympians, and he seemed more than capable of doing so if it wasn't for the joint efforts of the gods. To give you an idea of the epic scale of this battle, it raged on for over 10,000 years, and hundreds of cities were destroyed before Typhon was eventually stopped. Typhon is commonly referred to as the father of monsters, and along with his wife Echidna, together they created the majority of monsters we know in Greek mythology. Their children included the Nemean lion, the beast with impenetrable skin that Heracles was asked to slay as part of his twelve labours, Cerberus, the three-headed dog that protected the entrance to the underworld, the Lernaean hydra, a water serpent with multiple heads that grew back when they were cut off, the Chimera of Lycia, the hybrid creature with the head of a goat and the body of a lion, capable of breathing fire. It's also believed that they gave birth to Orthrus, the two-headed dog, and Ladon, the serpent-like dragon that guarded the golden apples in the Garden of Hesperides. The sphinx that was known to kill those who could not answer its riddles was also a child of Typhon and Echidna. The Gorgons themselves are quite similar in appearance to Echidna, and it's no surprise that they also originated from the father and mother of monsters. Most of the iconic creatures that we've come to know in Greek mythology have come from Typhon and Echidna. Typhon is quite a symbolic creature in Greek mythology, not only because he was feared by the gods, but also because he marked a very important change in Greek mythology. The fall of Typhon marked the end of the war between the Olympians and the Titans, and the exchange of power between the old god and the new. Typhon's creation and sole purpose was to destroy the Olympians, but as somewhat of a byproduct, he became the father of monsters, and we were given a host of extremely interesting creatures. There are very few creatures and gods in Greek mythology that I would ever classify as evil, as there are often two sides to every story, but for me Typhon is a fairly good example of what evil looks like. His only interest and desire is to cause destruction and chaos. You could argue that he is only doing as commanded by his mother and father, but Typhon lacks any redeeming features that would make him more than just a monster. 
I almost see Typhon as the Ragnarok of Greek mythology. The world is essentially almost destroyed, and in the process a new generation of gods rise to power and build a new world. We can also see Typhon as an example of the unstoppable force that is change and progress. The Titans refused to progress and evolve, and not even a monster as horrific as Typhon was able to stop them being dethroned. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, I know Typhon was a heavily requested topic and I look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments below. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.